stones, big stones. But you know the good thing about those stones? They keep falling on the heads of those who are throwing it. As long as you keep rising, don't look back. Raise your hand if you believe me. All right now, come on, let's get a little applause in here. Get some eons flowing in this room. Chapter four, set clearly defined goals. How many of you get up in the morning and set goals for the day? This is what I'm going to think, bless your heart. All right, that's one thing to set those goals. But you know when you set goals, what has to go with those goals? Action, but before action is what? No, the commitment, yes. When you have goals, what are goals? Goals are end state objectives, right? But how do you get to your goals? You have to do what? Plan what? What are they? Objectives. You have to have, have objectives. When you set your goal for the day, you've got to determine how you'll get there. Don't just say, oh, I, 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 I. Well, first of all, if you say, I'm going to go to work today, what do you have to do to get to work? You've got to get up and take a bath and do what you have to do. You're not going to get to work if you don't do all of that. So your objectives are how you get to work, right? All right? How you get to where you want to go. I have a, 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 a situation that happened to me one time, and I was just so determined. There was work that I had to do, some of my students' papers I had to grade, and I was determined to get up that morning early while everybody was sleeping. Nobody, the husband didn't need anything. Children don't need anything. It's my time, right? So I was going to sneak out of bed and go to the kitchen and get the work started. Well, let me tell you, because I had a goal and didn't have any objectives to achieve it, I'm telling you, I never achieved it. Because guess what happened? I snuck into the bathroom, brushed my teeth, and noticed that the tub was dirty. Doggone it, I got to clean that tub. So I paused and started cleaning the tub. When I was done with that, I said, okay, that's clean now. Then I got to, I took some clothes uh, out of the uh, uh, hamper and then went to the laundry room. My goodness, all those clothes in the hamper. They need to be washed, you know? They've been sitting there. So I started doing laundry. And while I was there, I looked down on the floor. My God, I was going to mop this floor. I never did get to it. So well, it's a good a, a time to get the floor mopped. I did everything but grade the paper. But that's what happens to us. We've got good intentions, but we never make it. Why? Because we didn't have definitive ways to get there. You cannot achieve anything until you get there. Professor Abdul Hadi was a gentleman that I loved dearly. He was my, uh, um, he was my uh, uh, social studies instructor. When I came to the United States, it was a rude awakening for me because, you know, when I came to America, I really thought that everybody had a white picket fence and everybody was a neighbor to leave it to Beaver. So I expected even to see Beaver. Ah, but you know what? When I got to New York, when they were landed in New York, I said to myself, I said, well, this can't be America. What, what, what? You know, I saw everything that looked like where I came from. I said, this is not America. Well, and then they robbed me at the airport. I said, now I really know I'm not in America because America has Leave It to Beaver next door. They don't rob, remember? Have you watched Leave It to Beaver? No, they can't, even, if Beaver st steals a dime, it's a big deal, okay? So this couldn't be America. Then I go to Alabama. When I got off the, when I got to the plane, I'm just, you, you say, what does this have to do with Abdul Hadi? I'm getting to, I'm trying to lay the foundation. So anyway, when I got to the airport, this lady says, can I help you, honey? I said, ooh, this is not America. What is she saying? They don't even speak English here. <laughs> that, was the, uh, that was the South. I said, uh, you, speak, you speak English? I... <laughs> she looks at me. She looks at me. She said, oh, honey, you ain't from this, these here parts, are you? I said, yeah, I'm going to America. She said, honey, you in America. I said, man, you don't speak English. She says, oh, she was just cracking up. But anyway... <laughs> I was the only African-American. I was the only African in the class, my social studies class, uh, Professor Abdul Hadi. And I was struggling so because of the southern twang. I couldn't, I could and I thought I had an accent. Then I really met people with accents. You know, so I could, so Professor Hadi, and I would struggle and I would call my parents. I tell them I want to come back to Nigeria. These people don't speak English. I don't know what they're doing here. I can't understand any of my lectures. So Professor Abdul Hadi said, 
Here is the goal. The goal is to get an education. And for you to get this education, you're going to have to find ways, set objectives, how to achieve it. If you don't understand what's going on, what do you do? Either you ask questions or get a cassette tape, tape it, and rewind. <laughs> and that's what I had to do too. Okay, and that's what you have to do. Once you have clearly defined goals, make sure that you have set up of objectives to achieve them. Next. Write down everything. How many of you write down everything? I have what I call the jungle book. How many of you have a jungle book? Well, I'll get you a jungle book. Some of you do. Do you know what a jungle book is? This is a paper, it's like my life, my other arm. Anywhere I, oh, there you go. You know, great ideas come to you at the most inopportune times. You know, just when you're not expecting it, something good comes to you. You say, ooh, ooh. And then you have to write it down. I write it, it's scratched up. Sometimes I pull off the side of the road because that idea sounds so good. And you know what? God is a miracle worker. Once in a while, something fantastic is given to you, but you lose it because you were not paying attention. Raise your hand if you believe me. It's true. It's true. So I don't let anything go past me. I grab it and I write it and I go back to it and I felt, mm, 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 yes, indeed. There was a reason why this was given to me. Write everything down. Everything you're going to do. Everything you, everywhere you're going. As a matter of fact, you can find out how you're utilizing your time by writing down what you do when you get up. Try it. Try it. Get up in the morning and start writing everything you do that day. And you will find what times of the day Am I most productive? And when you're, the time that you're most productive, by writing everything down, you would know. And that's when you put your most important things down. That's when you uh, uh, arrange your most important activities. All right, chapter seven, uh, six. Time, time, respect time. Respect time. You know, some of us say, some, some people tell us to be somewhere at 10 o'clock, and what do we do? We show up 10.30, and once we show up at 10.30, we have a million and one excuses why we couldn't make it. The dog died and died again. Uh, I have, uh, it's so interesting talking about respecting time. I tell my students at the university, one of the most critical things that you have to do is to be on time with everything. Because your objective as MBA students is to lead. How do you lead when you can't follow? How do you lead when you can't adhere to even something as simple as turning in your paper on time? God bless this young woman in my class. She called me, because so, uh, the university believes in um, problem-based learning and uh, group learning, team learning. So her team calls me and says, she hasn't turned in her paper and is going to delay our submission of our paper. What do we do? Um, the girl had called me the night before and she was crying. Her grandmother had died and... And I felt, you know, certainly you have to be compassionate when somebody loses their grandmother. So I was so compassionate. I say, I'm so sorry to hear that. I'll tell you what you do. Uh, why don't you call your team and tell them that you are going to submit the paper late because of the death of your grandmother and all of that. She was boohooing and crying so hard. I felt so badly. I said, well, don't worry about it. Just call them and let them know, you know, and we'll handle it there. So when the other lady calls and I told her, well, you know, I think you should be a little bit considerate. You know, I know she didn't turn it in on time, but, uh, you know, her grandmother died. She said, Dr. Simery, listen, she's just playing you. That mama, grandmother died how many times already? You know, it's like she goes and exhumes her and buries her again. <laughs> this is, she says, how many grandmothers can a person have? So uh, yesterday I saw the young lady. I said, why did you tell me your grandmother died? Well, 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 she did die. I said, well, well how long ago? Then the woman said, tell her six months ago. <laughs> I said, well, why are you lying to me? You've got to respect time. Submit your paperwork on time. All of us lose so much. What is it we lose when we're never on time with anything? Uh, what? Well, you don't achieve what you want to achieve. And secondly... You lose face with people. People don't respect latecomers. So, and then the other thing about respecting time. Don't let people infringe upon your time. Do you have that girlfriend that calls? 
Right in the middle, oh yeah, somebody says, yes, Lord. I know, I agree with you, honey. I got one of those. You know, they call you in the middle of your work. And they say to you, girl, and they're going, and you're looking at your time. You say, well, okay, let me call you back. No, 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 no. Well, I, I got some more, something else to say. Tell them you will call them back. Every moment that you waste moves you just a step behind from your objectives. So time is of essence. Don't let people, and that's why I say don't let people shoot on you. You should do this and you should do that. And quite frankly, if you know you've got something due, that is not the time to go to a movie. Your friend calls you and says, ooh, this movie just came out. Do you want to see it? And he said, you know, I have something that's due. What do you do? You go to the movie. You come back. You never finish what you were supposed to finish. You're miserable. You'd probably lose your job. If I was your boss, I'll fire you. But the bottom line is, time is of essence. Part of you writing your own story is to be sure that you don't ever take time for granted. All right, next one. Chapter 7. Prioritize. Prioritize. When you make your list, then what must you do? Write all your list and then do what? What's most important? Now, you know, you can't, and I have a friend. God love her. When you see her, it's like, girl, ooh, I'm so tired. I just, I am just so tired. You know, you know, I can't do all this stuff. People are, I say, well, the reason why you're always tired is you don't set priorities. You've got to do, you line all these things, and then on top of that, you don't know how to say no. Somebody calls you and says, you know, I need your help, can you do this? And you grab that. And before you know it, you've got a, a paper full of things that you can't achieve. Prioritize, and quite frankly, once you have made a note of what it is you're going to do, don't, de don't veer from it. Stick to it. It's called stick to it <laughs> something is if President Bush comes to the door and says, who wants to see you? But then I ask you this, if President Bush comes today and your daughter is sick and they just call you from school and say your daughter is heading to the hospital and then they say the President wants to talk to you, which one would you do? <laughs> I said, Mr. President, I love you, dear. got to go. You know, what, is, what are your priorities? Huh? Yeah. 